Good evening. Welcome to New Dawn Ministries TV. Tonight we are embarking on a new topic called a warning against lukewarmness. Now, over the past few weeks, we had a series on the entanglement of souls. It was an awesome teaching on soul ties, how they are formed, why they are good, how they can be bad. And if you find yourself in a soul tie that is not good, how you can break it and become free of that connection. If you have not seen these, please do go back and watch because I believe that there will be a setting free that takes place for anyone who is bound in soul ties that are ungodly. Now, tonight's topic is called a warning against lukewarmness. Having a warm bubble bath is very comforting. In fact, you'll enjoy it much better than if it was blazing hot, right? However, you wouldn't want to have the same lukewarm water in your tea. In fact, you'd rather not have the tea at all. The kingdom of God is the same. God has the same view in terms of the church's temperature. He wants his church not lukewarm. He, in fact, he says, I would rather have you cold or I would rather have you hot. But lukewarm, I do not desire. Let's see what he says in the, in the book of uh, Revelation chapter 3 verse 15 to 16 concerning a certain church of Laodicea. He says, I know your deeds. You are neither cold nor hot. I wish you were one or the other. So, because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I am about to spit you out of my mouth. Shocking. So God is saying, I would rather deal with you being cold because I know at this stage you need to know me. You need to know who I am. You have not known me. You are cold. Oh, hot, on fire for God, filled with the Holy Spirit, running, um, you know, allowing the Holy Spirit to move you wherever he wants. But if you are lukewarm, you are flexible, you know, one day you are, you, are, you, you are able to do the things of God, the next day you are not. In fact, a lukewarm person or church is one that at the end of time will come to God and say, but Lord, I did this in your name. I cast out demons in your name. I healed the sick in your name. And the Lord will say, I never knew you. Get behind me and will not allow them into the kingdom of God, into the kingdom of heaven. So it is a scary position to be in a lukewarm, to be lukewarm as a person. And so it's very important for us to realize when we tend to become lukewarm. Because I believe that no one wakes up lukewarm. It's a gradual process that happens over time. And before you know it, you have drifted away from the fire. You have drifted away from the power that you once possessed and you are in a comfort zone of lukewarmness. So um, there are four points that I would like to go through with us tonight so that we can see ourselves when we are tending to become lukewarm. The first one um, I have here is that you're losing or you have no passion for the things of God. You know, things like reading the word, prayer, meeting with other believers, going to church, become a drag for you. You know, I found people, I've met people that will say, I love God, you know, I, I love God, but 
I have left the church. And they say it with such pride, you know, to say, you know, I, I have made a noble decision because I have not left my creator, but I have left these people that are imperfect, that are, are not doing things right. However, if you spend time in the word of God, you will realize that actually God has ordained his church to be the host of his presence. He has ordained that he will work through his church. It is not through an individual that God will work. It is through the united body of Christ. And so if you remove yourself from the body of Christ, you are actually moving away from God. So there's no such thing as I have left the church, but I still love God. If you reject the church, which is the body of Christ, you are literally rejecting the presence of God and you are rejecting God himself. So do not be led astray. Um, Hebrews 10 verse 24 to 25 says, Let us think of ways to motivate one another to act, to acts of love and good works. And let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. Amen. If you happen to have irrecoverable differences, you know, doctrinal differences with a certain church that you are attending, prayerfully consider and engage the leaders and see if these cannot be things that can be resolved. If not, consider, um, prayerfully ask God for a church that you can attend. Do not find yourself in a state where you are comfortable at home, where you say, this church didn't work for me and now I'm staying at home. Do not find comfort in being in isolation. Moving on. The second point is when you start referring to Christians or the church of God as they or, um, you know, they are or they are doing this and you do not include yourself in the, in the whole conversation, you know, um, you ask someone, so what's happening at your church this Easter? And they will say, uh, they are planning to have services on such and such a day. They are planning to have this. Um, and the question will be, what are you, where do you um, see yourself? Shouldn't you be saying we are and we are going to have? Because if you see yourself as a part of this body of Christ, you should be including yourself in the whole thing. You should be saying we are planning this, this is what we are going to do. But the moment you start being a bystander, it is an indication that in your heart you have drifted away from the presence, you have drifted away from the communion of the believers and you are now considering yourself an outsider. Remember, as we said, God works through his body. So you cannot be external to his body and be hot. Thank you.